What's happening all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And join me today for my overview of the Batman Curse of the White Knight Deluxe Edition hardcover from DC Comics. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. So, here we have Batman Curse of the White Knight. This is the latest deluxe edition from the White Knight universe. It is a black label book, meaning that it's outside of the DC continuity, the DC Comics continuity. So it's in its own little pocket universe, if you will. This is a direct follow-up to Batman White Knight, which came out in deluxe edition, I believe that was in 2020. Uh, but here we have the cover by Sean Murphy. So you have Sean Murphy, Klaus Jansen, who comes in and does a uh, Mr. Free story and Matt Hollingsworth tying it all together with his colors. Sean Murphy, of course, being the writer and artist. Batman Curse of the White Knight, the Lux edition, DC Black Label down there. And then the back of the book I am Vengeance, I am God's Wrath. That was my Batman interpretation. That's, that's all I got. Uh, this book retails for $49.99. So it has been released before in a trade paperback it's been released in a standard size hardcover and here it finally is in a deluxe edition with a brand new cover so of course i have to put it together with the previously released deluxe edition this is batman white knight and set in the universe so let's check out what it looks like when you're gonna have it on your shelf so the batman logo it's a different color it's a little more golden than orange right there and white knight this one's curse of the white knight um you don't have enough room down there for the creators though and there's the symbol again and here are the backs of the books so you have jack napier on this one and you have a new batman armor here the bruce wayne underneath that armor what are we talking about and that is the thing uh when talking about this particular universe i can't do a video on this book by talking about the plot without talking about what happened here so I strongly suggest people reading this here. Let me look at it underneath the dust jacket. Reading the original one. There we go. For yourself, because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Um, you know, especially if you've not read this. Now, if you don't care about spoilers, of course, keep on watching. I think even putting me on mute might spoil some things for you. Looking at the back of this without the dust jacket and the new book here, Curse of the. Oh, I love Babs right there in her. Um, is that her TOC? Or is it GT, GTO? Thank you. Oh, yeah, GTO. Um, so, yes, uh, going into this, before I crack it open, oh, let's look at the spines together without the dust jacket. Before I break it open, um, just a little bit of a heads up. I do have to talk about the story of the White Knight, and I don't want to spoil that for anybody, so just in case, spoilers going into this by talking about this here and talking about the ending, um, not really going into details about everything, but I do have to kind of give a vague synopsis of what happened here to move on to this. Okay, let's go on then. All right, cracking this open. Here's what the end paper looks like. Batman Curse of the White Knight Deluxe Edition. Your credits right there. Sean Murphy, Klaus Jansen, Matt Hollingsworth. And world designs for lettering and of course the original series covers and art so what this collects in here is the limited series batman curse of the white knight uh one through eight and then batman white knight presents bond freeze and that's what's collected in here so we kick it off with this story that takes place in the past this takes place in arkham um this takes place in arkham manor in the year 1685 and we, you see these two characters fighting and they do reveal how everything is connected within these stories here but if you've read the original white knight this all connects back to that story that's why i have to talk about that so in the original series um it's your basic fight between batman and joker however there's a scene where batman has had enough and he just takes a bunch of pills and shoves them inside of joker's mouth and then Joker's cured from his insanity, and he becomes Jack Napier. So it's like his human side. Uh, he accuses Batman of abuse. He tries to change Gotham. Um, 
and it, and it's a really interesting take on the dynamic between both of these characters. He makes Batman question whether he's a good person or not. And I thought that was such an interesting story. That's what made that story stand out. And of course, Sean Murphy's beautiful artwork. And Sean Murphy, you know, he he has come on and said that he doesn't really want to work on anybody else's stories. He wants to tell his own story. And I, you got to respect that. Um, so this takes place in the same universe. At the end of The White Knight, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into spoilers, just a little bit, but at the end of The White Knight, of course, Jack Napier reverses back to the Joker, and he is sent to prison. But he's, because he teamed up with Batman in a few occasions, you know, the city is turning him a little bit better. So he's in Arkham Asylum here, and he's making a deal with the Warden. Uh, the Warden's bringing him this case, and he stabs the Warden with a pen. And it's, it's one of these things that keeps happening through here and he calls it my old disappearing pen trick so at least in this volume i didn't see it at that much in the first one there's a lot of throwbacks to not just the movies like the movies by tim burton or christopher nolan but also throwbacks to things that happened in the dc continuity of batman so he makes a deal with the warden he escapes and he wants to make it look legit Batman gets a letter from Alfred to look underneath his bed. He's been hiding something that will help him get through a bunch of things. So Batman goes and investigates. How did the Joker get away this time? So he confronts the warden and says, No, you were in on this. It's your fault. Where's the Joker? And of course, he gets scared and tells him where the Joker went. And here is where Batman finds some bones. And that all is related to that thing we saw at the beginning. And when the Joker escapes, he, this is uh, Dick Grayson, by the way, he's no longer Robin. And when the Joker es escapes, he's able to get the help of this old guy right here. And this old guy is someone that is, well, if you've read Nightfall, if, you're, if you've read Batman in the 90s, you're familiar who the character is because he has this specific sword right here and... He is going to wield this particular sword, and that sword, of course, belongs to Azrael. Now, in this universe, he does have cancer, so he's a little bit weaker. How he's able to do all of this, though, probably magic, right? Because of the Order of St. Dumas. And we keep going back to this particular story that took place in the past. Again, connecting everything together, uh, including the story of Azrael, how he's going to help out the Joker, including the story of Wayne Manor, um, and... We see less and less of Joker because he's playing things behind the scenes. I love Bab's outfit here for the uh, GTO. Now, through here. So, it's this big fight. It's kind of like Sean Murphy's take on Nightfall. You see a man lose everything. You see him lose his money, his Batcave, his manor. Bruce Wayne is losing everything to this brand new character named Azrael. And you do see appearances by other characters through here, other villains... Uh, you see how Azrael handles his supporting cast. There is the death of a beloved character. But again, this is all taking place in a different universe. There are throwbacks to Nightfall all over here, including some of the poses that he uses. Let me see if I can find this picture. Yes, this picture right here. That is a throwback to that issue 500 of Batman. So if you've read that stuff then this is going to mean so much more to you. Even if you haven't, since this is a completely different universe, you'll appreciate it. I I will say, to, to, to be honest, though, I didn't dig this one as much as I liked the first one. The, the first one had some really interesting things, like Batman, is he good for Gotham? Is he good for the people? Whereas this one, has Batman lose everything, and you start feeling bad for him, and you're asking yourself, okay, yes, Gotham definitely is Batman, but... Unlike the first one, where you're actually asking, does Gotham even need somebody like Batman? I think they're better off with Jack Napier. But because of the lack of Jack Napier, and, and he does show up through here from time to time, but it's mostly the Joker. And like I said, it's a lot of the things are happening behind the scenes. It's just not as impactful. The artwork, though, I'm sure you're looking at it right now. Holy crap. Sean Murphy. Good lord. He is such an amazing artist. Uh, now, he did write the story. That's all I will say about this one. But he did write this story right here. 
Uh, this is drawn by the legendary Klaus Janssen, and again, Matt Hollinsworth putting it all together with his colors. But this is the story of Batman the White Knight presents Von Freeze, and it ties Mr. Freeze to uh, Nazis. So, things we've seen before in the past, but just another take. Now, let's look at these extras in the back, including variant covers here. Love those covers. Man, Murphy's art. So kick-ass. Familiar faces, but set in a different world. That's the variant cover by Klaus Janssen. Character designs here. Including some of the characters that we saw in those early flashbacks. The thumbnails and sketches for White Knight presents Von Fries. Of course, done by Klaus Janssen from thumbnail to finished inks. Love it. And then the bios on the folks that put all this together. Now, the book has 280 pages. And it's glued binding. Now, that's different than the first deluxe edition. This first deluxe edition had sewn binding. And the other big difference is the paper stock they're using for this Curse of the White Knight. It's this matte paper. Whereas in the White Knight Deluxe Edition, they were using the glossy paper. So they used glossy paper, sewn binding for the White Knight Deluxe Edition that came out a couple years ago. For the follow-up, they're using matte paper and glued binding. Um, I don't know if that bothers people. I know some people it does, but I did want to point that out. Now, while the paper stock and the binding is different, the dust jacket is identical, though. Like, the glossy parts... Um, both of these are identical. Whether it's the picture that's glossy or the actual font. So that's uh, that at least is consistent. Yeah, this is flat right here and this has a glossy finish to it. Altogether though, while the story wasn't as great as the first book, my god, the art is just getting better and better. And it's still a fun take on Batman and alternate reality Batman at that. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this deluxe edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, if you have the original White Knight, and if you've read the story, what you think about it. If you've got any questions, leave your questions down below. What other stories do you want to see in the White Knight universe? And one day, do you want to see this all in omnibus format? This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our Patreon and Spreadshop if you're enjoying our videos. It's a phenomenal way to support the channel. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.